right, so now that I've got the X and the Y uh, put back together and test fitted, everything seems to be fine there. I need to set my attention to the Z axis. I've put the housing on here, and this is as far as it goes down. It hits this, it hits this uh, bracket here. This bracket is what held on the uh, accordion uh, weight cover. So that's going to be our lowest point. And uh, you can see this is slides in like so. And then this right here engages on the old one. It engaged this um, like so and that's what it used to raise it up and down so we're just going to try to duplicate that so what I did was I just took my ball screw and uh, stuck it in here like so run it through my bearing cover here and then just take and stick a nut on here temporarily and then what I did was from this surface right here I went back and took measurements to where it hit the barrel of the uh, boss nut let me see if I can show you here if you look in there you can see the barrel of the ball nut and I just took and measured to this barrel right here from here and got that distance and then I subtracted the distance between here and here because if you remember when we made our ball nut mount I left this uh, really long and that was so I could take these measurements and actually it's about an inch and a half long so I took these measurements I've actually redrawn it in Fusion 360 and we're gonna take a look at that and then we'll machine it out all right so here we are in Fusion 360 and this is our z-axis ball nut mount and you can see that I've changed it a little bit from our previous video where we drew this up uh, you can see we've added this groove for the shaft to go into um, that pivot shaft that goes through the z-axis uh, slide and then it connects to the uh, ball nut mount block so I'm just replicating what was originally there I just added this groove to ours and threaded it this is an M6 by 1 Okay, you can see that I have relieved the area down here at the bottom for the flange of the ball nut. I did this because I only ended up with about a quarter inch sticking out the bottom when I was all the way down. For whatever reason, I measured it. I came up with 600 millimeters, but you really need to have, you know, just to be safe, at least an inch or two. So give yourself 650 millimeters. Uh, you can even go 700 millimeters. There's plenty of room at the bottom. It's not going to hurt anything. There's probably another 8 inches before you hit the actual top of the base. So leave yourself plenty of room. Uh, you can see how the Z axis goes through there, the ball nut. And that's how it's going to mount up. Uh, let's take a look at some of these dimensions. So the total length of this between here and here is 78.25 and the distance between here and here is 50. 2 inches 50.8 and then the distance between this edge and the 
center of the hole here. And get it to find the center of the hole here. See, from here to here is 30 millimeters. And this is Eight point two five millimeters. The dimension from here to here is ten millimeters, and then this is from here. Here to here is 20 millimeters, and then this is 7.5 7 millimeters deep. So that's it. So we're going to do this on the X2 now. If you don't have a CNC machine, just like with before, uh, it's kind of hard for me to do this on the Precision Matthews because it's already tore down. And luckily for me, I have the X2 that I can machine this on. However, if you do not, you will have the benefit of having these drawings and you can machine these parts before you tear down your Precision Matthews. That's a benefit of not doing having anything to follow. Uh, when you have something to follow it's a little bit easier because it's already been kind of laid out and done for you. Unfortunately in my case I didn't have that luxury so I'm having to it's taking twice as long to kind of do everything because you have to take it apart, check fit, put it all back together. So to save all that hassle I'll be doing this on the X2. Um, the first setup here is going to be to machine the top here and we're just going to do this groove This is just a 3 8 inch end mill. It's going to be going back and forth, knocking this groove down. And then for the second setup here. be relieving this These holes were already drilled in here. Remember, I did that with the uh, when I made it. This hole for the pin to go through. I'm going to mark it after I test fit it. Uh, I'll mark it with a punch just to make sure that I'm not sure if it's off center a little bit or what. And just to be on the safe side, and make sure everything's lined up. I'll mark it with a punch. But you can see the uh, recess here. 
this is adaptive clearing. So we'll be doing a full depth of cut, which is 10 millimeters. Turns out good. Okay, so that is the new Z axis flange. So let's take it out to the X2 and we'll get these machined out. was taking a full depth of cut which was about uh, 10 millimeters and the width of cut was point zero one but uh, turned out turned out good so now I just need to re-drill and re-tap these holes and we should be good to go. All right, well as you can see, I've got pretty much got my CNC mounts. Uh, everything is mounted and working, at least with a drill motor. Pretty satisfied overall. I don't have any kind of lubrication on here. It's just all dry. Uh, but it moves pretty freely. The Z, the X, and the Y. So there's a lot of different things, little things that need to be done at this point. I want to do uh, the oiler. So I've got parts ordered for that. I've got to mill the oil passages on here. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. Uh, this saddle is really big for uh, the 727. I don't know how I'm going to fit it on the X2 or even if I'm going to be able to. So we've got to do that. I'm not too worried about the Z. I can mill it no problem. It's the saddle that's going to be the big thing. I want to make a spacer here. Right now I have eight and a half inches from the end of the table here to the column 
and I'm going to put a one inch spacer so that'll give me uh, nine and a half inches and of wide travel and I have about 18, 18 and a half inches we'll call it 18 inches of X travel so I'm right where I anticipated I would be somewhere around in there I'm really satisfied with with that so that wraps up this video if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment please subscribe to the YouTube channel thumbs up if you like the video thanks for watching and most importantly be safe